Hi, I'm Sheriff Susker, and I want to welcome you to One to One. This is a show where we talk about some of the most serious issues in our county. Some will make you feel uncomfortable, but they're issues that need to be talked about. Today I have a special guest. His name is Mr. Earl Burke Bay. Yes, sir. And his story is very compelling. It's a story about faith and determination. Mr. Bay, welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Thank I'm glad you. to have you here. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Bay, please tell us about yourself and your background. Yes. First of all, approximately 41 years ago, I was involved in a crime. I was the wheel man, I was the driver, and the crime happened in Anne Arundel County, and the crime involved a murder robbery, and it actually turned into a felony because the robbery is the aspect that turns it into a felony. And so, to make a long story short, from that, I was, because I was the driver, I was sentenced to life in prison. Um, I knew that from the beginning, my mother and my father often talked to me about having faith and how God was going to bring me through this. And so as I'm in prison and doing this bit, I'm keeping conscious at all times that God will prevail in all situations. And so I got involved in <coughs> uh, different programs. For instance, I got involved in the college program. First, I, I, I stopped school in 11th grade when I was home before, prior to being convicted. Mr. Bay, let me, let me yes, ask sir. you this question before we start going any further. Yes, sir. Now, you, you said you were the wheel man. You were convicted of a felony robbery? Felony murder. Felony murder. Right. Okay, so you were the wheel man. Yes. So you did not have any direct connection other than driving, I guess, the accomplices to the site that you guys were going to rob exactly. or something like that? Exactly. Okay, so now what I want people to know about this interview right here, this show right here, <clears throat> this is not us condoning right. anything that you did. Absolutely not. You know, we're, we're not condoning that, and um, you are a person that served your time. Served my time. Um, you were originally sentenced to life in prison. Yes, sir. Okay, you were sentenced to life in prison. But through an act of Congress, you, your sentence was reduced? Actually, the parole board. Parole board, okay. Yes, my, my sentence was, n n I wouldn't say reduced, my sentence was put on the, the, the basis of being, having me paroled out of the system okay. because I had, the, the parole board acts as an agent that can modify and change things within mm -hmm. your, your, uh, your prison sentence. Okay. So um, basically, they saw that I had, so, had, had um, achieved so much in prison in these 41 years. And actually, decades ago, they thought that I should be home in the street. But it, okay. was, it was not in their hands to do so at that particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2020, and back, the governor had the power to either release you on parole okay. or, or just m let you remain behind the walls. So the mm -hmm. governor denied me like a couple of different times. Okay. But see, and because the governor at that time, he was not involved in the process of interviewing you or seeing the mindset you had after being uh, in prison mm -hmm. for so long. So the parole board, strict hands on. And so because of their hands-on process, they knew what I had achieved. Okay. They are the ones that interviewed me and they knew my mindset had been changed years mm -hmm. ago. And so they wanted me out of the system. Okay. And so, so now let me, let, me, let me ask you this because we're, we're gonna get into, you know, how you changed from the man you were, the young man that you were back then. But first I, I, I have to notice, and I, I know the people watching are gonna wanna know this. Yes. When you look back on that, that day, you know, committing that crime, yes. you know, are we look, are, am I talking to the same person who committed that Absolutely crime? Absolutely not. Okay. Completely right. different. Okay. Completely. Uh, the Bible puts it, when I was a young man, I did those things that a young man would do, but now I'm an older man and my life has completely changed. Okay. And so uh, the, the, the process of changing, education is one of the greatest assets that a man can have to change his life because the prime motivator for change is dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I look back at the crime that I committed. 
I'm kind of like seeing it in a different way after being in prison for a certain amount of time. And I'm saying I, I regretted that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely regretted that to the, to the point of having remorse and so much remorse that it changed my whole life. And now I know I said one day I'm going home. Okay. But the thing of it is, is going home, what are you going to offer to society? What are you going to have wow. to maintain freedom? Right. So when I start look, looking at that, that prospect or that aspect of my life, I knew I had to get educated. So I finished my GED, got that within six months of the school program. And so some of the guys that was involved in the school program said, now nah, what you gonna do? And so they recommended me to go to college, Cotton State University. Okay. So I, I went to Cotton State University, got my, uh, got my Bachelor of Science degree in Applied Psychology, got a minor in Business Management, and got a minor in Sociology. Okay. And so now, after achieving these things, I'm still behind the walls and I'm, I'm thinking we put a program together to help to bring guys up out of these gangs. Okay. Before we talk about that, yes. now <clears throat> you're, you're in prison, you're looking yes. at life. Looking at life. What was the motivation to say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna get my GED, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attend uh, classes at Coppin State, but you're still behind the walls. Still behind the walls. Where's the motivation? Most people would be like, you know what, I'm just gonna do my time in here and do whatever I have to so, do to survive. But you decided, you know, exactly. and I, I'm, I'm thinking there's probably some negative influences in prison. Absolutely. You know, but you Men. decided to stay away from that and so, say to yourself, I'm going to do this. Where, where'd exactly. that motivation come from? First of all, the dominant aspect of the mindset behind the wall is to involve yourself in everything that is negative because you're talking about doing a lot of time behind the walls, mm -hmm. so you, it's, it's like artificial escapism. The okay. drugs, all of the legal activities behind the walls, because there's many things that is negative. I mean, the, the, probably 90% of the things behind the wall is, is absolutely negative. Okay. But you have to, what you have to do, I think I got connected with God in such a way that my faith brought me through it and my faith told me that you're going home one day now but how are you going home because okay. you can go home ill prepared misunderstood and ill equipped so i knew i had to get this education yeah. and that 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 gave me motivation okay you know so god i put god first and foremost in everything that i did everything that i achieved and he's still a dominant part in mm -hmm. my life right now. That's the only reason, and we'll talk about that later, what right. I'm achieving now. Okay. Yeah. So now, you, now you're telling me that you're in there and you, and you got your degree and stuff like that, so now you're trying to help other individuals. Well, in exactly. So Cause tell me about it. Matter of fact, uh, at least six or seven of the professors that, uh, that were instructors in the college program advised me to do that, to help others. They said, now you got your degree, mm -hmm. what are you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. But you're still in here, so I worked in the crisis clinic in the uh, penitentiary for a little while, okay. and I also formed a group to help organize getting guys out of gangs and to make mm -hmm. guy, get guys to turn to a positive. Okay, you know, so, right? Yeah. Okay, that, uh, believe me, I I uh, I applaud you on that part because most people who are in prison. You know, they, they cannot see the light. They cannot right. see the light at the That's end right. of the tunnel and then they get involved in other things. That's right. So what you've done with your life is you've taken a negative thing. Exactly. You know, and I'm, I'm not minimizing what you did. I'm no. not minimizing it at all. Not at all. Because there's victims out there, That's right. still out there, who That's suffer right. from, you know, your actions right. that day. Exactly. But what I am saying is you turn this into something positive where you're helping other people so yes. they won't go down that same road you did. Exactly. Right. So then we had to experience that. That's right. right. So now you're finding, you're, you're getting close. You're finding out that, hey, there is a date. That's right. For me to get out. Exactly. Now that has to be somewhat of a relief. Big relief. You know, excitement. Big relief. But there's also got to be some fear because now you're going to be out. How are you going to be received? I know these things are running through your That's mind. Right. So, so how did you deal with that part? But see, the thing of it is, is that I know from scripture says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Once I got, and that scripture 
it became dominant in my life because I said that truly I'm with God and God is with me. So fear could not be a factor of me getting out. It's planning, organizing, creating in my mind a path that I choose to follow once I exit the prison mm -hmm. system. So I got involved in that in my mind and I set that out, set that plan out. But I, first, before I got out, I prayed to God. I said, God, Father, let me hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. And I've been running ever since. I mean, things are coming astronomically at me in, in God's speed. That's okay. what I would say. Okay. So, but you know, coming out from behind them walls, you can't set your mind on a, a fear of, of being, I guess you could say, let down by society mm -hmm. because man man creates his own conditions. Mm -hmm. If you come out with a positive mindset and you have set, you have set goals for yourself to achieve and you begin to get on that road and achieving these goals, you're going to achieve them and people are going to help you. Okay. Because it's just it, that's the mindset you, that you've set on yourself and that's the way I set myself and I come out and, and I ain't missed a step. Okay. I have not missed a step. Good. So. Now, I, I, I know that when you came out, you know, you, you probably had some family, I would think, that yes. would help you. Yes. But there, were, there was one person that probably did a lot for you, and uh, his name is uh, Officer Horn. Officer Horn. Officer Horn oh. from uh, Naples and, City Police and Department. Right, right. Exactly. And uh, I, I know uh, him and uh, uh, Chief Jackson. Chief Jackson. They have a program there right. that I think is probably uh, uh, one of the best, if not if yes. not in the state, on the entire East Coast, yes. dealing with people like yourself who yes. are reentering society from prison. Yes. Can you, can you tell us about Officer Horn? Yes. Uh, I think within two days of being home, I met Officer Horn, and he offered to get me involved in certain programs and so much so that the, the project that he has, a uh, re-entry project mm -hmm. that, the, that the Anne Arundel County Police Department has, he p made me a part of that process. Now let me ask you this because yes. I want to make sure we got this correct. Mm -hmm. Was it the Anne Arundel County Police Department or the Annapolis City Police Department? Annapolis City Police Department. Okay, all right, okay. Annapolis City, go ahead. Okay. So he involved me in his program as a spokesman for the, uh, when you exit prison. So I've been traveling with him to different locations to meet certain guys mm -hmm. from Baltimore all the way down to Annapolis. Okay. And, and what we do is we interview these guys, we talk to these guys, and we try to get them involved in jobs and things of that nature because he has a, a program that will, you can get your... Um, you can get involved in a career orientation program. You can get involved in HVAC. You can mm -hmm. get involved in uh, track and trailer. Okay. So he, okay. Has, he has some good programs. All right. I, I, I have talked to uh, Chief Jackson and Officer Horn about their program. Right. And as the sheriff of Anne Arundel County, it's definitely something that I want to get involved in. Right. And I want to get involved in because we have to play a role. And yes. when I say we, I mean us as in, us in law enforcement. That's right. Absolutely. You know, because Absolutely. people like yourself, you're coming back. Yes. And what we do not want is for you to come back to nothing. That's and right. And then you have to resort back to the, the life that you had before. Right. So uh, I applaud Annapolis City, right. the police department, Chief Jackson, Absolutely. and uh, Officer Horn they for deserve. what they've done. Yes. So um, now, you've been out for a little while now. Right. How long have you been out? One year and about five days today. Okay. Yes. All right, one year and five let me, days. Let me, let me revert for one second. Um, Officer Horn, he, the, the program that the Anna, uh, Annapolis Police Department have is, is an asset to the community. Okay. The thing about it is that I'm a spokesman for the program. He invited me to speak before graduating class of police officers. Oh, great. Maybe about two months ago. Okay. Gave me free free range on the time. I spoke to them for maybe about an hour, and then I last, let them ask me questions for the last half hour. And it's like 30-some 30, 30 graduates. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a ball. And okay. so the thing of it is, is that when you, because you touched my heart when you said that we, as, you know, police and everything and, and sheriff's office, have to do so what we have to do to help guys re-enter right. and get get a good aspect on being positive into the community and doing something 
that is right mm -hmm. because they come from behind them walls where we don't know how many years they spent right. and what mindset they had. Right. So I also spoke to the officers about how you approach certain situations and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And they absolutely agreed. And then the captain came behind me and spoke and, and said, yes, that's, you know, so, but because you can't treat, everybody's not the same. Mm -hmm. Some cases take more, some cases take less. Right. But the thing of it is, is you have a mindset that you want to help this person. Mm -hmm. And when you, it's just like, when I got involved with Mr. Horn and I seen he wanted to help me, that changed my mindset into some more positivity. Mm -hmm. That was a great thing. Okay. So, so now you, you, you're, you're gainfully employed. Gainfully employed. Okay. Um, you also have your own place. Had my own home. And you were just telling me you, uh, you had a car, but you had, uh, I had went a and G saw Grand another. Yep. Cherokee. Okay. And, and now I have a brand new GMC. Okay. 1500 Sierra uh, Elevation. Okay. All right. Th and that's what I wanted. Good. I wanted that. Good, yeah. good, good. Yes, sir. You know, these are the things that the community needs to hear. Yes. Because we always think about when people are coming from prison, you know, they're going to be a drain on our society. Right. They're going to be a part of the, 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 the welfare program. They're going to be a part of this. Right. You know, they're not that's going right. to work. That's right. But you're proving them wrong. Absolutely. You're proving them wrong. Absolutely. You're saying, look, I can be gainfully employed. Absolutely. And I can be a part of this community, a yes. productive part of this community. That's absolutely right. Now, there's something else that you, you just told me. You're, you're about to get a certification or a license on something? Yes. I'm attending a class right now as we speak. Today will be my second class. I'm, I'm involved in a program to receive my captain license for, to operate a 100-ton vessel. Okay. So, like, as I mentioned, uh, well, I might not mention, but I worked on the water years ago. Mm -hmm. But now and I have this great opportunity, myself and my nephew, the both of us, okay. we are going together. We study together, and we're going to get this captain license to be able to operate a 100-ton vessel. And from that point, from that aspect, when we receive that license, we'll be able to get a license that will operate 1,600-ton okay. vessel, which will be a cruise ship. Oh, so now you, right? You see, I see. Yes, I sir. See. So that, that's wonderful advancement. advancement. And and I, I attributed that to God. Okay, I attributed all of that to God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, but staying on that positive course, allowing yourself to be directed, guided, and led by the force of God within you. Because every man has an aspect of God in him, mm -hmm. but he has to tap into that. Okay. When we come out of when we come out of prison. While we are in prison, I know hopefully some of the guys behind the walls will see this, but while you're still in prison, you have an opportunity of a lifetime because you have a library, you have all kinds of resources mm -hmm. behind the wall to be able to put yourself in a situation to be an asset to the community that mm -hmm. you're coming home into right. instead right. of a liability. Yeah. And so if you take advantage of these things, it's the world, the world is open to you. And mm -hmm. people, the, the mindset that you set yourself in, that's the way people will approach you. Okay. Because I've never, since I've been home, I've never had anybody approach me with negativity and things of that nature. Now, I know that might be, it might sound a little strange, mm -hmm. but no, because I always keep a smile on my face no matter what's going on. I never let, you know. You know, I, I, yes, I will tell you this, because the first time that I met you, yes, sir. and, uh, we started talking, yes. and we had a great conversation. Great conversation. And I left you thinking, there's no way this guy was in prison. <laughs> there's yes, no sir. way, because, you know, now it's been a year and some months, yeah, but right. you had really kind of like just got out back then. Just got out. But your mindset, you were so positive. Right. You know, you were so positive, and I said to myself, because I, I was running for election, I was running yes, for sheriff at the time, I and I said, when I win, because I was right. being that's positive, absolutely. when I win, I said, we're going to work together. Yes, you I did. said, because you have a compelling story that people need to hear. That's right. See, in law enforcement, you know, our primary objective is to remove those who do wrong from the exactly. streets. Exactly. As you should. As we should. That's right. I'm, I'm glad you said that. That's right. Yeah, That's because it. people need to be removed from the streets. That's right. Now, I believe in our justice system. Absolutely. I believe that when you go in, there's a system of rehabilitation. Absolutely. So when you come out, you're going to be better than what you were when you went in That's mentally. Right. That's right. You're going to have to work harder to get started again. 
but mentally you're going That's to be right. in a better space because That's you're right. going to say, you know what, I must stay focused. I'm not going to go back there and do the same thing That's again. That's right. Absolutely. You know? um, your story, like I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. is a story of faith That's right. and determination. And determination. You know, That's you right. had all of those people in, in probably in prison telling you, and you were telling us there's crimes in prison, drugs, gangs, That's and things like that. Absolutely. You steer clear of that. That's right. Now As a matter of fact, let me put this ahead. point. The, uh, probably about seven to ten days before I came home, this was associate. See, because I, I understand friends. Okay. Always, when you're about to do something that is not quite on point, okay. friends is always going to check you, and they're going to do everything that they need to do to keep you from getting involved in something that might take you down. Okay. But I, I, this, this guy was an associate, and seven to ten days before me, before I came home, he knew I was coming home. He said, man, the world owes you everything. You should go out there and take everything that you can take, you know, because you just, you've been locked up too long, and you should have a mindset where I, the world owes you everything. I said, ho, ho, ho. I said, now, you trying to project that into my life? I'm saying... I'm dealing with a situation where I came behind these walls, I got a good education, I'm going out with a positive mind, and you trying to change that? Mm -hmm. I said, we don't even need to talk anymore. You okay. need to go and rethink that. Right. You rethink that and come back to me and talk to me, we can talk. But if, if you still have that mindset, I'm getting ready to go home. So I'm not going to attach any of that negativity to my life. Now, I said that to say this, there are many guys behind the walls that mm -hmm. they need to see a different light mm -hmm. in the world because they have such a negative mindset. Now, through the program, we had a program called YGE, Youth Gang Emancipation. Okay. We were bringing guys into this program, 30, 35 guys. I was the president and the chairman of this or organization because mm -hmm. it's, and it's even registered with parole and probation and it's registered with headquarters for for um, the Division of Correction. Okay. Um, we what we did was we ran these guys through a program for three months to help them get a mindset of positivity. Okay. Some of the gang leaders mm -hmm. joined this program. Okay. And reverted out of these gangs mm -hmm. because it's 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 the approach that you take with these guys. So, Guys like that, sometimes you have to take a very serious approach, and sometimes you have to be aggressive with them, mm -hmm. because that aggressiveness in you will represent what you have, how your life changed okay. to them. Right. So right. once you do that, and they see, man, he's for real, because see, I understood this. I'm the, I was the chairman and the president of the program. I couldn't let them see anything negative from right. me, because if I did, then they would use that to pivot off of, to say, well, you know, you doing so and so and so. So it's not just when you were in the seat as the chairperson holding meetings and stuff. It's a lifestyle. That's, that, that's a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. Because like myself as the sheriff. That's right. When I'm in the office, I'm in that's that right. chair. That's right. But I can go home and nobody knows, you know, that's right. who I am at home. That's right. But for you, they see you 24-7, 365. 24 /7. That's right. Exactly. So you had, it's a lifestyle that you, you had to live that life. Had to live that life. And, and it yeah. has to be genuine. Right. See, right. once you start living it, once you start living that type of lifestyle, it becomes first nature. Not second nature, first nature. Okay. You wake up every day. I woke up every day, even for those, prior to me knowing that I was coming home, all of those years back, say 40 years, well, say 39 years back. Once I set myself into a positive course, yeah. I kept that mindset all the way through. And I met, I met opposition. I met yeah. guys that were negative. I met situations. Right. I met situations that I had to deal with. Okay. But I dealt with those situations in such a way that the guys around me, because for the most part, I was always in leadership positions, but the guys around me would say, ho, ho, don't even approach him with all that cursing and stuff right. you're doing. Don't even approach See. When you get God in your life correct, mm -hmm. and you absolutely commit yourself to to having a lifestyle of God, God it says He will even, He will make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Okay. Not saying that they won't stop; they'll stop disliking you, right. but they'll be at peace with you where they won't interrupt your day. 
And so I, I start visualizing that. And now I got on a course where I, I, didn't, I didn't have to deal with that. Okay. I had so many guys around me that were in the same mindset right. that they wouldn't even allow that to come around me. Okay. You know, because, you know, behind the wall, of course, some guys curse. Right, right, right. They, they curse they all the use, time. They, they use language that you probably hadn't even heard in the street. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the thing of it is, is that they will respect you. Right. When they see that you're consistent with a lifestyle of positivity, they want that. They okay. really want that. Okay. They don't really. See, it, it takes energy, wasted time. And it takes a lot of negativity to stay in that lifestyle mm -hmm. of crime, okay. of ill will. It takes a lot of power and energy to do that. Right. But the energy and power that it takes to be positive, you draw on that from infinite source. You draw on it from God. Yes. But let me, say, let me ask you this. It, for those who are about to come out or those who have already reentered society and they're, they're struggling, yes. what words of encouragement, what advice would you give them? Get the, the main advice that I would give them is to get God in your life, man, and okay. get into the Word of God, get into that Bible, find scripture that's going to build you up into the person that you really need to be because you, if you're in that lifestyle of negativity, that's what you don't need to be that. Mm -hmm. So in order to draw from a because the source that you're drawing from God, you can't deplete him. You can't run him out. Okay. And once you connect with that, there's no, no limitations on you, okay. no limitations. Okay. I'm, I'm saying just to go back to the things that I've, you know, within, within 10, because I asked God to bless me to hit the ground running. Within 10 days of being home, I had my, I had my vehicle, I had a vehicle, Grand Chief Cherokee, before I even got my driver's license. Really? God, okay. yeah. And, okay. so, and so I had my driver's license within 15, 20 days of being home. Okay. And so I, I, I went to get an apartment. I got a house within yeah. three months of being home. Okay. All so, right. I mean, you know, it's just, I'm just showing everybody that's watching this. God in your life, there's no limitations. You take God out your life, everything. Mm -hmm. is, is, you're blind. You really, you, you're really walking down a road blind. Anything might jump out at you. Anything might happen. Mr. 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 Burke Bay, I, I, want, I want to thank you. Yes, sir. And let, let me say this. One of the things that you said, well, you said a lot of things, but one of the things that you said that, kind of, that really resonated with me, and I, I hope it resonated with uh, everybody that's watching, yes. is that, and this goes for anybody, if you've never been in prison or if you're coming out of prison, sure. you said when you got out, you realized basically yes. that the world didn't owe you anything. Nothing. Nothing. Because you understand that if you want something, okay. you got to work for it. That's right. And that's what everybody needs to understand. Our everybody. young people, our older people, that's if right. you want something in life, right. you have to work for it. That's right. And if it's hard to obtain, it's because it has value to it. There you go. That's it has it. value to it. That's it. So, again, thank you for coming. And it's been my pleasure. Yes, sir. And I look forward to working with yes, you sir. in the future on some other yes, things, sir. hopefully some reentry yes, programs. And I want to thank everybody for uh, joining in. And I also want to thank the Annapolis City Police Department yes, for sir. their wonderful program yes. they have there, Chief Jackson, yes. um, Officer Horn. I want to Absolutely. thank you for everything that you do. Yes. This is about enriching our community That's right. and making sure that those who do come back you know, they That's don't right. commit the same crimes or do the same things right. that they did before they went in. One last thing before you Go close ahead. out. I want to give high honor to you, Sheriff Seska, because when I met you in Anne Arundel County approximately not 10 months, 11 months ago, you were running for the office of sheriff. Mm -hmm. I met you, I met the county executive, but when I met you, you had such positivity I was kind of like driven to you because all guys that I see this positive, I'm driven to that. But when you said, I'm going to become sheriff, you did that because you had straight and narrow. You had that vision and you knew in your heart, this is what you're running for. This is what you wanted and this is what you got. So I give you high honor, man, because, oh, thank you. man, I'm telling you. And you're a wonderful individual. I saw the same, the same positivity you say you saw in me. Yeah. I saw the same thing in you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, that. sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank yep. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. And please stay tuned for our next episode where we talk about some other important topics that affect you in the community of Anne Arundel County. And as always, 
please look out for one another and be safe.